on our interview segment, we caught up with Air Commodore Akube Iyamu, though a military personnel. He has so much passion for the environment and he spoke to us on a number of issues, including open defecation and its hazards and risk on the environment and health. And of course, how to generate riches from rubbish. These are twin issues which he has covered in his new books. The environment is where we all live, we all operate and everything. Uh, just to remind you, uh, I belong to the uh, uh, global efforts of climate change collaborators. So climate change is a main conversation for everybody that is going on. And just two or three weeks ago, the U.S. Army presented their policy and strategy on climate change, which will if, uh, affect their energy transition and how they are going to be operating their war machine in the nearest future, going up to 20, uh, 20, 2025 or thereabouts. Mm. Open defecation is a very big global problem in Nigeria, in the world today, and in Nigeria in particular. Why do you think this is a challenge that everybody should deal with at this time? First of all, I must thank the Nigerian for, for giving me the opportunity to make a talk around the world and uh, also by sending me to Neymar to go and serve there. That exposed me that, look, the, 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 the crisis of open education, it is, going to, it is going to affect the world in more than ways that we think. Now, open education was first mentioned in 2008, in 2008. And uh, that is when it was used at high level. What is it? It, it, it means you defecating in places, open space, open buildings, and everything that any, anywhere apart from the toilet. Then it gained prominence and entered the lexicon, public lexicon, in 2013 during the World Toilet Day, where open defecation was used in political and uh, environmental circles. Now there are. Then they, 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 they construct the JMP, the Joint Monitoring Program, which define what open defecation is and what uh, 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 the various uh, 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 toilets can be. You understand? You have you, 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 you have two types of what the toilet will be in terms. Let me, when I get the name, I'll let you know. So those ones, they call it civilized and uncivilized toilet. But now, anybody who is defecating, if you have where that the, the defecation is not on the outside, that means you are not assumed to be defecating openly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then there are uh, the other type which you really have to construct toilets. For now, there are about almost 700 million people who are practicing open defecation. So it is a problem because of its health hazards because of the financial consequence, because of the, the, the any, com, any country, anybody coming to any country, what he's going to look at is your toilet. It's your first advertisement. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's your first advertisement. So they look at it and it is a sign of poverty. Now, um, in Nigeria, for instance, you said it's a sign of poverty. Yeah. And, so, and that makes it more worrisome because it is associated with uh, poor people and yeah. rural communities, yeah. people who cannot afford a decent toilet yeah. system. Uh, but here we are, even in the federal capital territory, you know, places where you cannot consider as rural communities, even in universities, where, uh, you know, uh, the school authorities have not provided uh, facilities yeah. for students to use. You see students going behind classrooms to defecate in the open. What does this say about the country in Nigeria? You see, uh, like every other part, we have made a lot of uh, significant effort. Uh, like the executive order uh, 009, which was signed a couple of years ago, that says that you must provide toilets in buildings and everything. That's on its way. Now, again, too, we have open defecation free in Nigeria. These are efforts, great efforts in moving it forward. So, you look at it. Open education has been with us since the 14th century. People, see, to get open education right, you must resolve the conflict 
between people and the environment, between people and poverty, between people and lack of civilization and everything. So it's a cultural thing. People still believe by now that if you defecate inside your 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 uh, house or toilets in your house, it brings bad luck and brings a whole lot of things. No, they are not looking at the germ aspect of it. So it's a cultural thing. People will just prefer to do it outside and. They don't see why they will use their money to construct toilets. They still believe that it is the government that should construct toilets for them. No, it is for their health. So if you must deal with open air, because you must deal with water, hygiene, and sanitation, they are interrelated. So water, hygiene, and sanitation, lack of it creates create the, the, the background for open education too. Some people just want to do it for doing sake because they feel that there is a cultural attachment to it. Mm. There are some people, but there are others who believe it is, uh, you know, dignifying for you to defecate in the open. But they are just forced to do it because even where toilet facilities exist, like you said, there's a mm. correlation between water, sanitation, and hygiene. Mm. When you have toilet facilities without water, it's as good as not having a toilet because nobody would want to go and you know start beholding what other people have put in there that has not been flushed out. So how do you deal with that as well? Is it also the people that should provide themselves toilets and then provide water for themselves as well? Is there a rule government can play in all of this? That is a conflict. That is a conflict. I tell you how how high water is. If you go through the books, I will, I know you have gone through the books. Open the education uh, and the environment, the risk, the hazard. There was a case of a little boy during the COVID nineteen. The water that was put for washing hand. When he got, he was drinking it instead of washing his hand. Water is an issue. People go to the bush now. They don't carry anything at all. They just go there. Either use the leaf or use newspaper. Do you understand? So, that like uh, <clears throat> John Elias says, look, we must, we must, first of all, like we did to, to latrines and all. He was former secretary general of the, assistant secretary general of the, of the UN. We must also deal with open education like that. Consequences. That is water hygiene and sanitation, poor diet, the resulting in cholera. It's even killing more than HIV and AIDS. No? See, the environment was created to regenerate itself. That is, on the ground that we all will be reasonable. But since the Industrial Revolution, we are not reasonable.